Hey everybody, this is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. I'm going to take you on a walk through the garden today. It's going to be a little bit different. Um, got some things to share with you. Um, some good news and some bad news. Um, but anyways, I'm going to take you through uh, the garden and just show you what's going on there. And uh, just tell you kind of what's going on in my area of the world today. Alright, so this is my container bed area. And things are coming along great. If you saw my last video, we were dealing with the polar vortex here in Michigan. In my t potato pots, I had lost the um, greens on the top because they were just starting to poke through. And I wasn't too worried about it because they were just starting to poke through. So I figured that the potatoes had enough energy. They produced some more uh, foliage. And I was correct. You can see all the nice foliage that's coming through um, from the potatoes. Um, they're all planted in these pots. Some are uh, more later rivals than others. But yeah, these are my potato pots and uh, be so excited to see how many potatoes we get this year. These beds are where my greens are. This is where I grow a uh, variety of, of different greens. I have uh, lettuces, mustards, spinach, and kale um, planted throughout these beds um, and they're looking really nice. I also have some carrots here as well. Um, I put carrots generally in my container beds because I know the soil is going to be loose enough and um, it, it'll drain so the carrots should be able to grow and spread out and um, not have a problem growing. But my kale is looking really really nice. I like this. Uh, this is actually a lettuce blend mix. I think I got this one from Emma Gardener, salad bowl mix. Really, really nice. It's got a lot of different things in it. It's just really, really pretty to look at. And then uh, this is red Russian kale. It's really nice. And then this is scarlet kale here. And then these are my different lettuces. Um, I also have tatsoi mustard and spinach. So it's looking really, really good. And safflowers. <clears throat> Uh, these are my direct sown. This is where I planted seeds directly in these beds. The other ones I grew in milk jugs and transplanted. And you can see the major difference. Uh, my collards are, are starting to grow. I have some beets and some chard in here, but they're nowhere near the size of the previous beds here. And again, my garlic and some other um, things growing in these beds here. Main garden area. We just got this bed mulched. I have some plantain right there that I tried not burying. I use plantain a lot um, with my uh, medicinal stuff, and it's also good to eat just in a salad and things like that. And then my medicinal bed that way. <clears throat> I can hardly wait until these irises bloom. I know they will be gorgeous. My husband's actually going to rototill this area. I had a bunch of seedlings here. You can see some um, that are from when this used to have flowers in it and they overseeded abundantly. And um, my mulch got down uh, way too thin. And so I have uh, seed seedlings everywhere and it just wouldn't be able to uh, get these all dug up. So um, we don't have enough cardboard and things to start piling up the mulch again. So my husband's just going to uh, till this spot because I don't plan on growing anything here anyway um, this year and we're just going to start with the mulch again after it's tilled um, and that should help um, with that. Generally we don't do tilling in our, our garden. We don't believe that that's a good way to go. Um, sometimes though if you have to start over you got to do what you got to do. So yeah. My tansy is really starting to look good. Um, last year this thing got six foot tall. I've talked to other people who said that their tansy only gets about two to three foot tall, which is what this is right now. Um, but ours last year was a good six foot or more tall. These are my peas. I'm about ready to transplant. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to start another batch. I don't think so. It's getting too late to plant any more peas anyways, but they will go 
along my pea trellis. This is where I grow peas almost every year. And you can see the ones that I've already transplanted a couple weeks ago. They're doing really, really, really good. So I'm excited about that. And then I have some more um, items that I got going on in my jugs. These are snapdragons. Um, I can't remember what this is. Let me take a look at the tag here. This is a lemon balm. A lemon bee balm, sorry. Lemon bee balm. So that'll be a nice addition. I already have two other bee balm varieties in my uh, garden, but that'll be a nice addition. I have my cilantro and my coriander, which are technically the same plant, but one um, produces seeds faster than the other. Um, I also have some marjoram there, some thyme, some fenugreek, and some dill. Looking good. And these are all my other jugs. I have to start transplanting soon. Those bachelor buttons are getting extremely tall. <laughs> it's time to get them out. Um, but these are looking really, really good as well. <clears throat> these are my loofah seedlings. I grew these inside because in my zone, um, you have to almost start them inside in order to get uh, a chance on growing them. They need a very long growing season in order to get... Um, them dried out where you can use them as loofah sponges. Uh, loofahs are a gourd. Uh, you can actually eat them when they're younger and um, I forget what people say they, they're like. I think they said they're kind of like a zucchini or something if you eat them when they're young. Uh, but my idea is to grow them for them to dry out so I can use them as a sponge. So you can see how big these plants are. I've been growing them for a couple months now. And uh, so I'll probably transplant them, if not tomorrow, maybe Sunday. Um, and they should be good to go. And uh, we should get some nice loofahs from them this year, I'm hoping. Okay, so for the not so fun part of the, the video, I wanted to share with you um, my area. Um, I live in central Michigan. And uh, starting Monday, we got some quite heavy rain, and uh, it rained a lot. Uh, about 1 a.m. in the morning, and it would be Tuesday morning by then, um, I was awoken to uh, the emergency alert system going off. And apparently a, a dam in our area um, had failed because of all this water. Um, and so people were being told to evacuate. I don't live where the dam that uh, was on the alert system was. I was a little confused as why I was getting the, you know, these alerts because I wasn't anywhere near that particular area. Well, things just kept kept getting worse. Um, more alerts came across the the uh, emergency alert system. Um, another dam failed, and this dam I knew personally where it was. It was a lot closer. And then another alert went out. Another dam, which is even closer, um, had failed. Um, and this was still early hours um, that this was going on. A lot, a lot, a lot of water. Um, all said and done, uh, at least three towns have been devastated. Um, at least. Um, we had the town of Edenville which was uh, where the Edenville Dam was, that um, uh, it completely was destroyed. Um, and then there's a little town village thing, <laughs> I, I don't know how they describe it, called Hope. It's between Edenville and Stanford, if I remember my geography right. Or it's in that area anyways. Um, that was uh, devastated as well. And then um, the Stanford Dam, which is seven miles south of the Edenville Dam, they're all on the same waterway. Um, so when the Edenville Dam failed, all the water that it was holding back went seven miles downstream uh, towards the Sanford Dam. And uh, that dam failed as well. The water breached it. Um, 
the dam structure as of right now the uh, the Stanford dam is st it's still standing um, but they're not sure how long it's gonna hold um, it's got all the debris from upstream smashed against it plus uh, water that's still coming because uh, the Enoville dam is no longer there so it's not holding back any water at all anymore so it's all coming downstream um, Stanford was completely underwater yesterday um, Edenville was underwater for a while because there was a lot of flooding um, and until that dam actually broke they were under quite a bit of water and then um, the lake that Edenville is on it's called Wixom Lake in about two hours that lake went almost completely bone dry so Edenville is not underwater anymore because all the water is now in Sanford and what's in Sanford is heading towards Midland and for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about as far as geography or Michigan or anything maybe you guys know of a company called Dow or Dow Corning um, Dow makes a lot of household items that you probably use every day uh, saran wrap, Windex, 409 just to name a couple right off the top of my head uh, but they are a huge manufacturer of household chemicals and other products that are used day to day Dow is in Midland um, and so there was a danger that um, depending on on this flood situation that Dow itself could be in trouble which would be a huge environmental disaster in this area um, so far Dow is safe um, but we're waiting to see if that Sanford Dam is going to hold or if it's going to give way because uh, if it gives way we've got water coming a long long ways that um, is not going to be stopped at all anymore um, so that's the concern right now um, I'll share some some pictures of what it's looked like around here um, in the last uh, 48 hours And I'll also post a link to a video that really talked great about um, the dam system that um, we're talking about and uh, you know exactly what happened. Um, from what I hear, I've seen a couple pictures. Water's starting to recede a little bit from Sanford, um, but it's all hinging on whether that dam's going to hold or not because um, it could go right back underwater again if that dam gives way. It's very, very sad. Um, I'm not directly in that area. I'm actually 15 minutes uh, west of that flood zone. So I'm not in it, but um, I have a lot of friends who are. Um, many roads and bridges have been washed out. People are stranded um, kind of on an island, so to speak, um, between uh, the different parts of the roads that are washed out on the east and west side um, so it's it's stressful very very stressful um, for a while I was kind of mute um, when I get really stressed out um, one of my body's coping mechanisms to protect itself is I can't talk I literally um, I'm physically unable to talk 
but I want to do this video today and just share with you guys what's going on here in our area. I'll let you guys know if you've been watching that uh, we're safe. Uh, we're away from the, the flood zone right now. Um, but we have a lot of friends that are in that area. Um, and they just need uh, your thoughts and your prayers and uh, all those things. Um, and this ain't over yet. Like I said, uh, if the Sanford Dam gets away, this is going to get worse. Um, the people who own the dams, and that's a really bad situation. You can look them up yourself on Google to get some idea. That's Boyce Hydro. Very shoddy company. Um, it's a very sad situation all around. But, um, yeah, just uh, keep us all in your thoughts and your prayers. Us Michiganders have been through a lot, um, but we'll get through this. Um, and uh, as soon as we know how we can help, we'll be there helping our, our neighbors. So, um, yeah. So take care, everybody. And I hope that wherever you are, that you are safe and that you are wonderfully blessed. Bye-bye. Yeah, guys, an idea of what's going on.